Well, welcome everyone. Um, tomorrow, just so you know, heads up, I'm not going to talk about it today. Eclipse, have a new moon, slow, uh, partial solar eclipse tomorrow. Um, usually they bring a lot of energy in <laughs> and they're usually trying to really light something up inside of our awareness. So be paying attention if you haven't already. Um, the next one will be November 7th or 8th, I believe, and it'll be a lunar eclipse. So I'm not planning on talking about astrology today, though, because I'm going to talk about this guy. And this is Ganesha. Um, so we actually have several poses um, that uh, stem from Ganesh and from the stories of Ganesh. So I know he's painted black and it's kind of hard to see the details. I have gone over in classes before what a lot of the symbology is for him, such as his belly and his ears and his mouth and his eyes. I'm not going over that today. We're going to focus on something different today. Uh, this is stemming from some inspiration I got out of giving someone here Reiki last week. I gave someone Reiki and a picture that kept coming up um, at some certain point um, well, it's his right hand. It was Ganesha's face. Ganesha's face kept coming to me and specifically showing me the tusk um, next to his trunk. And if you've ever paid attention to Ganesh, lots of times he's depicted with only one tusk. One is missing. In fact, um, when I purchased this Ganesh years and years ago, um, I was getting ready to move. And when I was getting ready to move and I was packing him up, I was like, oh, his tusk broke. And then I realized it's supposed to be broke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are stories about this. So I'm going to share with you the stories uh, because there's all these myths regarding uh, these characters. And there's three stories about how he lost one of his tusks. So the first one is his parents are Shiva and Parvati. And they were at Mount Kailash and they were having... I don't know a moment together. I don't know. He was down at the base of the mountain and he wanted his parents to have some private time. And there was someone coming to talk to Shiva, which was his father, who is up on the mountain. And he doesn't want his father to be disturbed. And so the guy gets angry, doesn't realize it's the Shiva's son, and throws an axe at him. And Ganesh didn't even move when the axe was thrown at him, and the axe cut off one of his tusks. That's one of the simple stories of that. Uh, but there's another story that is much more detailed. So there's lots of old books that stem from India, the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Sri Bhagavad Gita, the Mahabharata. And the Mahabharata is a book that tells a lot of the stories and the myths of the gods and the goddesses. And when the Mahabharata was going to be written, uh, the person who was going to uh, write it, he was actually going to, what, what's, help me out here. When you dictate, is that when you're writing it down or is that when you're speaking and someone's writing it down? Okay, so someone was going to dictate it and they wanted, thank you, and they wanted Ganesh to be the, the scribe, you know, the one that write it down. Well, the thing was, they had to do it all at one time in one city. If you've ever seen the Mahabharata, it's a book about this thing. So they knew that they had to get it completed. And so while he was writing, the pen stopped. He didn't have any more ink. And Ganesh knew this is my only chance to get this down. And so he got creative. He snapped off the tusk <laughs> and he used the tusk to continue to write it. Okay, that's another story. And uh, now forgetting the last one, the, the third one. Um, I gotta remind myself what it is. Oh, this is a funny one. This is the best one. Okay, so every god and goddess in these myths have a vehicle, and usually the vehicle is an animal, which is why we have so many animal poses, right? Garudasana, the eagle, that was the uh, vehicle for fishing. We've got the mouse, and the mouse is the vehicle for Ganesh. So imagine a big Ganesh, half elephant, half man, riding on tiny mouse. He had gone to a palace, he had gone to a feast, and I don't know if you noticed, but Ganesh has like a Buddha belly. He likes to be gluttonous. And he went to this feast, and there was all this food, and he was eating and eating and eating and eating and eating. Oh, he felt so good. He was leaving. 
to go back home, riding his mouse because he's too full to walk. And a snake crosses the path. Well, what do snakes like to eat? Mice. Yes. And the mice <laughs> freaked out and ran behind the bush. Well, when the mouse turned really fast to go behind the bush, Ganesha fell. And when he fell, his belly broke open and all the food that he had consumed was falling out onto the ground. And he wants this food and he's trying to put it back into his body and the moon is full and is looking down at Ganesh and he's laughing hysterically. The moon thinks this is so funny. Well, Ganesh gets pissed off at the moon and he decides he's gonna curse the moon and he cursed the moon and said, you have to stay blackened and no one's ever gonna see you again. Meanwhile, he's trying to figure out how to keep this food in his belly that's broke and he decides, I'm going to use that snake. And you can see a snake on him here. Um, he takes the snake and he ties it like a belt, like a tourniquet on those. <laughs> he ties it to keep all the food in. Meanwhile, the moon is just distraught because he's cursed and he wants to shine. And he's begging Ganesh, please don't curse me. Please lift the curse. Please lift the curse. And then he says, okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm not going to take the curse completely away but I'm going to make you turn from new moon to full moon back to new moon. And that story explains why we have the phases of the moon. So anyway, I thought that was cute. <laughs> all these things, all these stories came about from a Reiki session. Learning a little bit more about the tusk. The last thing I'm going to mention about the tusk, when he has two tusks, it represents wisdom and emotion. When the tusk is torn off, that one represents emotion. And the emotion stems from duality because duality creates drama and division. And with drama and division, there's emotion. So he wants to maintain the wisdom. He's letting go of the duality and the emotion. This was thousands of years ago, guys. And think about that. The duality being drama and division to emotional. Can we rise above it? And can we hold it up to the wisdom? It pertains to now, really, just as much as it did back then. All right, let's go ahead and recline. It's right back. So I'll turn on the up. Let's go ahead and place the hands down on the belly. I mentioned Ganesh portrays like a Buddha type belly. And sometimes when we're breathing diaphragmatically, that's what we reference. So when you start to embrace and engage with your breath, begin to magnify your breath so that your belly is really ballooning up and out. And then every exhalation, feel it relax and fall back here. Now, the belly is also the emotional center of the body. So remember, when that one tusk is removed, it's letting go of the emotional trauma, the duality. It usually stems from labels and identifications and beliefs and opinions. So let's neutralize our mind. Let's neutralize our emotions. Let's neutralize our hearts by taking deep yogic breaths. <laughs> so we're not emotionally charged. These deep diaphragmatic breaths can calm the nervous system, which will in turn neutralize the emotions. Breathe well and breathe deep down into the belly. We're going to start today's practice with some bridge poses. And we're going to flow in and out of these bridge poses at first. So let's go ahead and bend the knees on the next in breath. And let's flatten the hands down beside the hips. On your next inhale, you're going to move down through the soles of the feet. You're going to charge into your hamstrings and buttocks. We're going to circle the arms overhead to track alongside your ears. 
<laughs> as you exhale, the arms are going to circle back around as you lower one vertebra at a time until your hands in sacrum land on your mat. And then pace yourself. Inhale, coming up to bridge, set to Bandhasana, trying to keep the mounds of the big toes rooting so the knees stay narrow. And as you exhale, roll back down cautiously and slowly. Continue this repetition. Inhale, rising up. See if you get a little more, more height in your pelvis, a little bit more lift in your chest before rolling back down. And so each bridge pose you take, notice you get a little bit more range. As you're opening up the front of the body, feel the openness of your hip flexors that become more hip extensors at the top. And as you exhale, keep the belly warm and contracting as you let it all go. Do two more. Now this next time you lift up, Come all the way down if a block is not accessible. If the block is accessible, grab a block close by, slide it up underneath your sacrum, and sit right on top of it. And when you sit on top of it, just take a moment to let go. Flip your hands open and fan them off to the wood floor. Now you can let your back body rest but you're still getting the benefits of the pose. This is helping the spleen. This is good for the lymphatic system, the belly. And this is also good for the thyroid gland. Now we're gonna move into our first elephant pose by inhale, lifting the right foot, sailing that leg overhead and pointing the toes. So this is one variation of elephant pose. As we're here, we're also going to circle and open up the hips. So this will be our inhale here. As we exhale, you're going to circle the right leg off to the right side. You're going to lower it down towards the front edge of the mat. And then on the in breath, you're going to snap it right back up to the top. Good. Exhale, circle it down and around. And inhale back up. Now, if you get any popping through the hips, it doesn't hurt, it's just air releasing from the joints. Do two more of these. Exhale down and around. Inhale, fly it back up. So I want you to think when you come right back up now, pause and hold. Think of this right leg as being like your elephant trunk, trumpeting up towards the heavens. On your next out breath, go ahead and land your right foot down to the sticky mat and take pause. Close your eyes briefly, and I want you to pay attention between the left and the right side. Your right hip may feel heavier, more sedated. You may feel a light <coughs> coolness or tingling happening in your right leg or foot. Now let's match that up. Inhale, set the left leg up, point the toes. Our first elephant pose today. We're going to be doing this pose again at the end of practice, but in a more active way without the block. All right, now let's open the hip. Circle that left leg off to the left side, down towards the front edge of the mat, and then inhale, snap it right back up to the top. Exhale, circle it down and around. Inhale, pike it back up. Continue this work, this movement, and sink with your breath. By the way, Ganesha is said to be the remover of obstacles. Oftentimes, if you go to any rituals or ceremonies, they will uh, chant something to Ganesha either at the beginning or sometimes even at the end. 
He is one to go to for beginnings. He's also the ruler of the pelvic floor. Pause at the top. And then exhale, lower the foot down to the ground, staying in supported bridge. Again, just noticing those currents as they continue even after we exit. Might even connect to some energy lines or some circulation running through that leg or foot. Affirming here as you hold, I offer every thought as a bridge to divine grace. Now go ahead and plug the feet down into the floor, tuck and lift away from the block, move the block to the side and roll it down one vertebra at a time. You're gonna take a hold of your left knee and you're gonna slide your right leg out in front. All right, our next little flow here. We're gonna inhale, extend the arms overhead and the left leg forward and out. Let that foot hover above the mat. And then as you exhale, hug the left knee right back in. We're gonna stay on the left side. Inhale, extend the arms, the left leg. Exhale, gently hug it in towards your heart. And then continue with repetition. Last one. But you're gonna hold and hug the left knee in and continue to breathe. Letting go of the repetition and just holding this steady. Then monitor how you're holding this leg. Do you have a death grip? Are you being overbearing in your hug? Can you let go just a bit and find the Goldilocks approach of it being just right, not too little, not too much? Now let's go ahead and slide the left leg out and the right foot in. Let's go ahead and take a hold of that right knee, hugging in at first. And then we'll begin that same exercise here. Inhale, arms overhead, right leg forward and out. Let it hover a few inches. And then exhale, draw it right back in. Continue. Same command over your breath. Notice if you're rushing it, is it possible to slow it down? Let this be the last one on this side and then hug and hold. Hold and breathe. Finding that Goldilocks approach on this side. Now continue to hold the right knee. Take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, pick up your head and lift it towards the knee. And then inhale, lower the head, extend the right leg. Exhale, draw the left knee and pick the head up. Inhale, release. Exhale, right knee draws in, scoop in the belly, contract the core. And then at this point, once you get to the left side and lift, if you want to amp it up, you can keep the straight leg hovering. You can keep the head off the floor. Just give it a little extra scoop and lift as you breathe out. That's if you want more core work. 
If you don't, I understand. <laughs> you can do less. But we're building up for something. We do need the action of lifting the head up and the belly contracting to lead us into a peak pose that we're going to be doing today, which is another elephant pose. All right, then recline down. Hug both knees into your belly and chest. Apanasana, affirming, I reduce all scattered forces to rise up and away into the sky. Now extend your limbs, all four limbs out like a four point star, five point star. Stretching out the abdominals, stretching out the body. Being free to take up space, not being limited by the corners of your mat. Create that Buddha belly as you breathe in. Let the breath escape from the mouth as you breathe out. And then your knees. You're going to roll over to one side and you're going to come up to sit and you're going to grab both blocks. We're going to do one more floor exercise and then we're going to get to standing. So you're going to want to have the blocks on your medium height and you're going to take like a Johnny Shashasana with your right foot in between the blocks. So once you extend that leg out, you're going to take your hands beside your hips. Now, this is also an important element for one of the poses that we're building up to. This is requiring the lower abdominals, the hip flexor, the quads, and the ankle. Okay, when you're ready, inhale, lift the right leg, scale it over the right block, and then lower it. Okay, so think about all that you're utilizing here. Inhale, lift the leg, bring it to the middle, and lower. Good, inhale, lift. Exhale, take it over the left block and low. Beautiful. Inhale, lift, scale through center, and low. We're going to continue this. The faster you go, the easier it is. Slower you go, whew, the harder and more strength building it is. But find your own pace. You're not doing it right or wrong if you're going fast or slow. Just listen to your body. Do what's appropriate today. Okay, so remember, you're all doing this. This is something that you can do. <laughs> okay, through middle, we need to switch sides because it's not where you really sore. <laughs> okay, it's in the left leg. Bend the right knee. The hands can help. To help boost the chest up to create better posture. Inhale, lift the leg, cross it over the left block, and set it down. Lift it up, bring it back to the middle, and release. Inhale, lift, stand over the right block, and release. Oh, you know what to do. We'll just keep this going. Core, hip flexors, quads, and ankles. So we're going to be piecing and threading several different things together. One of those is going to be the crunching in with the belly. Another element is going to be what we're doing here with the legs. And another piece that we're going to be adding in is the strength of the arms, locking them into place. This is going to be our last set here. All right, you can turn the blocks up at the front of the mat. Actually, don't do that. You're going to have them here. I'm doing something weird today. It's not weird, but different. Okay, let's come up to stand. Let's stand at the top of the mat. We're going to ground the feet. So that we separate them a few inches. Bend the knees. Bring your hips and thigh bones back so you can see the toes. And then elevate your arms. Look to the toss in line. We're going to do some breath work here. So exhale, breathe out. Inhale, breathe in and up. 
Exhale, breathe down and out. Continue. Last one. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold over, straight legs to your Uttanasana. You're standing forward, fold. <clears throat> Bowing yourself down. So we did work the hamstrings a little bit, but they may still be awakening. Still early. Inhale, come halfway up or arch up. Exhale, you're going to lower your hands. You're going to step into plank. Now pause in plank because this is the arm structure that we're going to be dependent on later. Right, the same action of lining up shoulders, elbows, wrists, supporting our body weight. Now rock forward, lower down the Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, land the knees, and then drive the heart through and up to up dog. Exhale, rock and roll back, downward facing dog. Tilt your hips back, bow your head down. Open up some space in the spine by rooting through the foundation. And flying up to your seat. All right, inhale, the left foot's going to step forward in between the hands. The back foot's going to spiral down. We're going to float the hands and come to stand. Now, you're not changing the position of the feet. I know it feels maybe a little awkward. We're going to bring the block down right in front of the pelvis to lower the hands on top of it. Keeping the left toe spun to face the short edge of the mat. The right foot is more parallel to the short edge of the mat. All right, from here, we're going to take the right hand up to the hip. We're going to clasp a hold of that block with the left hand. And we're going to lift the block and we're slowly going to swing open to the left, taking that block to the outside of the left ankle. Good. Now look down at your left hand. Stack the hand with precision below the shoulder. Once you have that stack, determine do I need to be on hand or fingertips to be able to straighten that leg. Now roll open through your chest. Notice when you keep looking down, when you roll open the chest, you want to keep that left shoulder aligned over the thigh and then turn your face towards the front door. Fly the right hand up in the air and fan the fingers apart. You're in triangle pose. So we got into triangle completely differently today. So I really wanted you to feel how we get into a twist here. Now roll the left shoulder back. You got it. That will line up the shoulders. And then encourage the affirmation to enter your mind, allowing energy and joy to flow down to you. Now look down. Bend that left knee, bring the hand down, bring that block over to the left corner of the mat, plant your palms, step into plank. Falls in plank, streamline the arms. Build that upper body strength. We're building up for an arm balance today. Rock forward, lower down to Chaturanga. Inhale, fly the heart clean up. Exhale, draw into the belly and roll back, down dog. Next inhale, right foot steps through, back heel spins down, float your hands up, try not to alter your feet, and come to stand. All right, now lean forward, find the block, set your hands on top of it, and extend out through the spine. Now place your left hand onto your hip, pick up the right block, slowly carry it over to the outside of the right ankle. Continue to look down for a moment. Make sure the hands below the shoulder. Make sure you're straightening out that front leg. And then roll open through your chest through the left shoulder and fly the left hand overhead. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Now you can always turn the block to a lower degree <coughs> if this is too high for you. I started with the higher version. 
Make sure the breath is open and available to give the pose some life. And start to cast your gaze down towards your right foot. Lunge that knee, set the left hand down, spin off the back heel. Send that walk over to the right. Good. Plant the palm, set that plank. Pausing for a brief moment to strengthen your wrists. Exhale, rock forward, lower down, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, urdhva mukha. Exhaling, adho mukha. Stepping the feet slightly closer together as they widened up. And then your next in breath, let's bring the feet to the top of the mat. Let's lift halfway up to our right. And then exhale, bow out. Inhale, chair, Uttapasana. Exhale, same breath work. Continue. Think about Ganesha being a river of obstacles. Think about doing this cleansing breath work and sweeping away the obstacles, anything that shackles you, anything that's blocking or prohibiting you from moving forward ahead or evolving somehow. Inhale, hold you. Exhale, fold in. Uttanasana. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhaling, Chaturanga Dandasana. So we're passing through his plank, not holding. Inhale to up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. This time on the inhale, we're stepping the left foot forward, rolling the back heel down as we did before, except we're taking that left hand now to the chin. Straightening that leg. Now look down. Make sure you have the same alignment you did before without the walk. And fan the right arm out. And up. I'm really going over this a little bit longer today because I've been seeing some poor alignment in a triangle. And you guys look beautiful today. This is great. All right, exhale. Lower the right hand down towards the left foot. And then inhale. Take your time fanning it right back up. All right, that's our new flow. Exhale, contract your core a little bit as you lower that hand. And then inhale, spread open to allow room for the diaphragm as you lift that sail. The next time you come down on the exhale, frame that front foot, spin off your back heel. Lunge. From the lunge, be here. Good, step back plank. Take Chaturanga Dandasana as you breathe out. Open the heart as you breathe in. Take the inversion as you breathe out. All right, we're gonna be taking that same triangular flow, but this time with the right foot stepping through, the back heel lowering down. Straighten out that right leg and stack the right hand to the shin. Make sure you have that alignment. And then fan the left arm skyward. Make sure you feel balanced. And if you do, lower the left hand towards the right foot. Inhale, sweep it right back. And then continue that process. This time when you exit out, lunge that front knee. We'll take this last vinyasa for this Surya Namaskara. Meet him down dog. And we're going to do one more sun salutation after this. But we're doing the B sun salve today, so you're getting three vinyasas in each one. Inhale, let's bring those feet to the top of the mat, lift halfway up. Exhale, lower back down. Inhale, chair. And do your breath work. Good. 
Think about this being energetic, clearing internally and externally. Just like life makes deposits inside the body, sometimes we have sticky residue in our auras too. All right, inhale, hold. Exhale, pour down, Uttanasana. Keep it moving, inhale, halfway up. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, move up. Exhale, move it up. All right, we're starting with the right foot this time. Inhale, right foot's gonna step forward. You may want blocks, you may not need blocks. So if you can straighten out the front leg, you don't need blocks. But you may need to bring the floor to you to get that leg straightened out. Stay on the ball of the back foot where the back toes are facing you, you at the top of the mat. Good, square your hips. That was awesome, Julie. Stretch out through the mid portion of your back, your heart center. Now stretch your right arm forward. And you're gonna slowly, 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 slowly spin to the right and sail the right arm overhead. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Is it just me? <laughs> Is it just my acting there? <laughs> yeah, it's day. Beautiful. Good. Exhale. Bring that right hand down. Lunge that knee. I like that version of revolving triangle. Move the blocks. Step it back. Take the next vinyasa. Inhale. Left foot steps forward. And again, if you can straighten out that front leg, we don't even need the blocks. Sometimes it's nice to use them just to change it up. Now, before we do anything else, I want you to bring a hand up and I want you to check your, your hip bones. Do they feel level even with each other? Or are they both um, facing the front? If one's kind of spun open, like that, that would be the right hip. You just roll it on around. Once you have that sacral even, now lengthen your left arm. Rotate it up to 12 o'clock as you turn your torso to the left. Three. Reverse or revolving triangle. Exhale, bring the left hand down, lunge that knee. This is our final vinyasa. Send it back, slow it down, building up, breathing out to invert. And then the pranayama doesn't translate to breath control, it translates to energy control. Inhale, feet land at the top. Open the heart. Nice. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, breathe it out. Continue. This is preparing us for another <coughs> elephant. Two more. Inhale, chair. Exhale, Samastiki. Pause. Separate the feet wide. Open. All right, this is where we go into another elephant pose. We lace the hands. Almost feel like the chart isn't bad. <laughs> and then lift the arms up. And then on the exhale, we're going through the legs. And then inhale up. Exhale through the legs. Inhale up. So you don't want to be as furious with the arms as if you were chopping wood, but it's similar, right? It has a similar action. You're just not being as forceful 
because of that force might you know tear into the hamstrings and we don't want that now the next time he comes through the legs inhale only halfway up and you're going to turn to the right and roll your head up underneath the arm that's it and then exhale swing the trunk through the legs think of the elephant trunk come halfway up roll to your left look up underneath the left arm this is the knee flow halfway up roll and gaze up underneath the arm and get that little twisting action very happy elephant swinging its trunk. Last one. Actually, do your last one to the left since we started to the right. All right. We're going to step back on the mat. So building up for a certain arm balance, not this one. Let's just do this first. Come into squats. I want you to feel when our seat is down this low, how we really sense gravity and our seat gets heavier. So it's gonna be hard to do an arm balance with the tailbone facing the floor like this. So we have to get it up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift the tailbone up. We're gonna turn the feet parallel and go ahead and set the elbows to the knees. This is called bear pose. Thank you. From here, start to notice if the belly is just kind of hanging out, mine is. So I have to remind my belly, hug it. So once you hug the belly in to support the back, you're gonna take the elbows off the knees. So you can look forward to see what I'm doing. We're gonna lower the head and take the hands back. If you're with me on Wednesdays, you know where we're going. We just did that today. So now we start to sit the hips down, but in order, to be able to get the feet up, we have to squeeze the legs to the arms, depend on the strength of our upper body and wrist to be able to flex and float the feet on the floor, like so. See if that's possible. Got it, Jamie. Good. And then you just sit down or plot <laughs> Enough of that. <laughs> Our balances truly are harder for us women. But once we build up the, the strength, once we build up the body awareness, then we can do it. So we're gonna work on this pose next. Send your left leg out in front. Bend your right knee. Pull in the bow pose. You're gonna take your peace mudra around the big toe, lift that foot up, and then you're gonna crank it back. Okay, so one version of pulling the bow pose, your left arm is just kind of hanging out here. If you have the flexibility available, you can stretch forward and take a hold of the toes with that hand. Again, not necessary. This is still a pose here. Either way. I hardly ever instruct this one where you grab the toes. All right, now. Use this hand to cup up underneath the right heel, okay? And remember how we ducked the head down in that previous pose? We're gonna duck the head again, and we're gonna take this arm and shoot the leg back and ground the hand. Now, when we let go of this foot, we have to point, pointing the toes is helpful for me because it helps my calf squeeze to the arm. And then the left hand's gonna come down on the outside of the leg. Now, the next trick is you have to lean forward, lean over your lap, and then squeeze the belly like you were doing those crunches in the beginning to lift the butt. And then pretend you're lifting that foot over the block and you're in it, elephant trunk pose. 
Do you see how we're piecing it together? So I have found for women, the hardest piece seems to be getting the butt off the floor. We, we tend to carry more weight in the hips, or we feel like we do, not that we necessarily do. And so it's truly leaning into the hands, doing the core work to be able to lift the butt. And then once you got the butt off the floor, just remember, how do I get that foot over the block? Oh yeah, that's gonna lift the leg. So let's try it. <coughs> Second side. Right leg out, left knee bent. Peace mudra around the big toe, lift it up, pull it back, pulling the bow. Right arm out. Or lean down and grab the foot. It's still the same pose wherever you land. Even though I can do it on the side, it doesn't feel as good on the side as the other side. So I'm coming out. <laughs> Take that hand, hold the heel. And then this frees up this arm to duck and to push that leg back. You got it. And then let go of the foot, point the foot, and squeeze it down. Then the right hand comes down. So for back here, you can't get up. You have to lean out over to push through your palms to lift the buttocks off the floor. And then elevate the right foot. Yeah, yeah, sweet. <laughs> and, I mean, even the leg squeeze is difficult because sometimes it wants to slide off your body. So if you've been perspiring, if you put on lotion, right, it goes against the, uh, it goes against what we're trying to do. Sometimes long sleeves, the leg will slide, you know, depends on the fabric. You know, you have slick fabric on, it's all dependable. All right, let's bend the knees. Actually, yeah, let's do this really quick. Lower the left shoulder to the inside of the left knee. Swing that right arm out and up towards the side. Now you have an option to be here. You also have an option to slip the left hand behind your left thigh and bring your right hand down behind your back. So I'll show you from this angle. And it may not go, right? You may be stuck here, but you might be able to. This hand might come here or you might be able to hook the index finger. You may be able to hook the hand. Don't worry if you can. The main part is rolling the right shoulder back and keeping the heart elevated and the head up. Yeah. And then unwind. So you gotta get to that other elephant pose. <laughs> right shoulder down, left arm up. This is the gentle form. Gentle is always great. And if you want the more advanced, right hand crosses under, left hand behind the back. All right, roll the shoulders. Okay, remember the pose in the beginning? We put the block in for the supported bridge and we just look to the leg, right? Elephant pose. You can do that. Do you guys do wheel or upward bow from bridge? No, you don't have to. You can still do it from bridge. I don't always do wheel. We'll see what's available. I'm gonna show you really quick what you can do. There's two ways of doing it for bridge. So when you're in bridge, if you want to tuck the shoulders under and lace your hands together, then you'll lift the leg up. And then the other. Or you can hook the elbows underneath the ribs, hold your waist with your hands. This one's easier to do only if you have the flexibility to stack on your upper arms, okay? And then the other variation would be, and I don't know if I can do it yet today, is wheel and then lifting one leg at a time. So I'm just gonna do one. 
But if you wanted to amp it up to wheel, you know what to do. Encounter, coming down and hugging the knees in. All right, so determine which one you want to try. Which one are you up for today? <laughs> so bend your knees, flatten your feet, roll the shoulders under the body, and then see, can I lace my hands? Would it be better to take my hands around the waist? Or if you're really back bendy anyway, skip the bridge and go to wheel and just go for elephant that way. And when you're doing it more actively, you may not be able to hold it as long as what we were doing with the block. So don't feel like you're having to muster up straight to stay forever. Maybe take a couple breaths and come down and switch to the other side. Something I'm seeing Jamie doing that is acceptable. You can elevate your heels and be on the balls of the feet to get the hip. It, it kind of elevates the hips a little bit more. And it does give you a little leading edge to be able to lift one leg up, especially in wheel pose. I didn't demonstrate it that way, but a lot of people will come to their pose. Is that easier, Julie? Yeah. It's also a good calf strengthener if you wanted to tone up your calves with that move. And then once you've done it, you can come out. You would hug the knees in as a counter and maybe rock side to side. It's time for relaxation. So if I were you, I'm going to just check in with the body. And if your back feels tweaked any amount at all, I would suggest taking Stonehenge with the two blocks of the bolster on top to elevate the legs so the back is more flat, or just bending the knees as you recline. If your back doesn't feel tweaked at all, just think about what would be the most relaxing position today. If you grabbed a towel, feel free to cover the eyes. Settle in to the pose of your choice. And all you have to do is to continue to monitor your breath. You continue to monitor your breath, notice <coughs> the realm of your mind. Hopefully, it's more one pointed. Then check down into your body. Hopefully it feels more open. Or wait. Dropping down into your heart. Hopefully the heart feels more clear. More integrated. Less dualistic. You can 
finally, body, the attributes of the heart. Uh, that's where the true wisdom lies. Is that is the seed of soul. So drop into the wisdom of your soul. That's what the one cusp left represents. Inner wisdom. Mouth to inhale, lay it on the exhale. I want you to remember anytime you're feeling a dualistic conversation or energy, getting to feel caught up in your emotions, this deep belly breath work will help to neutralize it. Let it be medicinal. And that's the one and only thing you take from today's practice. It's a plant. 
Your next inhale, stretch your arms overhead. As you exhale, hug in. Rock on your back, side to side. And find your way to a comfortable seat. Sitting upright. Joining your hands together. all remember the importance and the power of breath, the times when we need the most. May we allow wisdom to rise above emotion. May we overcome any obstacles we face. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you. Thank you.